Alright guys, so in the last video we were successfully able to create a new user as well as we put some, we did some cool uh, creation of the some kind of validation as well as we were fetching some data and we were setting up the image avatar images also. So we were able to do a lot of stuff. And now it's time to go ahead and create our login resolver so that every time not user, just to issue a token user not gonna user is not gonna register himself so that we can do very easily so basically we are working with our this type definition user type definition as well as the user JS in resolvers so I'm gonna create a new function a query basically because since login is something that we are not storing any kind of data on the server or we are not mutating we're just reading something so I'm just gonna get rid of this dummy one which we have registered and in here too and let me quickly shrink so that everything becomes nice and clear so inside this query object and inside here I'm gonna define a query call authenticate user and this will take two inputs so we need a username to authenticate and that will be of type of string and it cannot be empty as well as we also want a password so basically this password will be also a string and we cannot uh, this cannot also be an empty so and this will return kind of a payload that payload the same payload which you are getting over here so I'm gonna paste that auth response and once I have registered that thing inside the query I'm gonna register inside the resolver to with the same name so this will take as usual we have our underscore then we have our this part arguments and then we have a context and in the context we were ex we are just going to access our user and we also want to use name as well as the password so and then we are gonna inside this arrow function I'm gonna define our method to authenticate the user using his password as well as the username so let me quickly save it and save this thing now let's go and create that over here so what I'm gonna do is firstly gonna look for a user inside the database using this user model as well as this user so we are gonna define all the steps find user by username okay and if that user is found then we will ma uh, check for his password so check for the password and in that we'll be using our beaker package in order to mask in, our, in order to match our plain string password with our hash password which is stored inside the database as well as once we have done that if we found the user we are just gonna return our to issue we are gonna issue a new token so new issue new authentication token and let's go and do this step one by one so firstly we'll find a user so let's say user equal to and just a second if that user uh, yes yeah, it's, it's fine so I'm gonna quickly shrink this mutation if the user so we'll await and since we are going to uh, await over here so this is gonna be asynchronous function so I have to mention that at the top await user dot find one and by the username so here we'll pass our username that we are fetching from our uh, from our this arguments so we're gonna pass that and if that that gives some kind of user that means our user is registered then if that is there we'll check that if not user so if the user is not registered then it will throw some error throw a new error user name not found not found and then we'll throw it by using Apollo errors and firstly I'm gonna again wrap everything inside try and catch block and we'll throw our error and inside our try block I'm gonna write the whatever we have done so far and I'm gonna throw new Apollo error and in that we'll pass our error dot message 
So whatever message I'm getting here, whatever I'm passing here, as well as I'm also gonna pass a status code of 404. So this is 404, that means not found error. But if now the, if there is a user, then we are gonna check for the password. And for the password checking, we are gonna bring one more thing called compare from our, this beaker package. So that compare will now will compare our plain string password with our hashed password. And this is also gonna take some time. So we'll simply say let is match, we define a value, match equal to await compare. And in that I'm gonna pass my plain string password. So I'll pass that plain string password. And from here also we are getting our user. So we'll match it with our user dot password field. And this will give me a truthy of all the values. Basically, it will be a Boolean value, which I will be getting. So now, if is match is true, if is match is false, then this part will become true and we'll again throw back this error, kind of error. And that error can be like a invalid password. Password. And then we it will again throw it back to this our catch block and then we'll send it as an Apollo error message with the status of uh, four instead of 404 I think we should pass it as something else uh, they, basically I'm gonna pass it with the 403 basically unauthentication unauthorized now once uh, both the things are passed and we have our user valid user which is registered in the database as well as our password is also matching then we are going to issue our token so we are going to say let token equal to uh, actually what I'm going to do is basically resolve this again yeah we can do that so I'm going to await for the token await and then we'll issue token that function that we have already brought in the previous video how we have seen this and we'll pass our user there so issue token and within that we'll firstly serialize our user that we have and the user that serialize serialize user so serialize user so let uh, not actually we are just, just gonna repeat everything user dot to object so this will convert our Mon standard Mongo object into a plain JavaScript object. And from that, we are gonna serialize this user. So we'll say serialize user, and we'll pass that thing again. And also we forgot to use that ID will become this part, user, dot underscore id that we'll be getting a mo from our mongo field as well as well, what we can do we can get rid of this part from here user dot user equal to user dot this and then we'll pass our final user with the id and then we'll pick some hand-picked data from there using our pick which we define it now our user function over here so this will take the id username email first name last name and avatar image and then we'll issue that token so we'll pass our user here and once we have issued our token we'll return that response with a token as well as our user so this will be this will is a gonna this is gonna issue the token and let me quickly try it out so in our GraphQL schema I'm gonna create a new, new query basically so authenticate user and in this one next time I'm gonna use it as a variables not here but for now that's fine so we'll simply say authenticate user and this takes username let's say for now our username was nandy mandy one two and our password is here super secret which I cannot forget and then again I uh, once this is resolved I want to get back user and within that user I want that ID 
as well as the username as well as avatar image email then we have a last name first name and we can just see and put all those properties whatever we want as well as we also want our token so we can get back our token too and I quickly realized that I made a, just a bit of typo in our this post scheme I guess just let me quickly check and our posts somewhere I put some commas which wasn't required at all here that's fine for now yes that's fine too yeah that's fine so this should do the job and now if I authenticate the user you can see I'm getting my whole user object back with as well as our access token is there so now uh, we are gonna create kind of a function so where we can post that token and get our authenticated users profile so that's also kind of that's also gonna be kind of a query because we are not going to change or manipulate anything inside our server so we can use that uh, we can create a register we can register that mutation inside our users.js in type definitions and just above that we'll say auth user so we'll pass that and this will give me user type so basically here we'll pass our token and then we'll get our res re resultant user back with the token but how we are gonna do that so basically inside our source I'm gonna create a new folder called middlewares and within that I'm gonna create a new file called auth.js so this is our custom middleware which we are gonna work with and which we are gonna define in this one so the custom middleware which are we gonna create here will be you will be using a couple of function a couple of things so first of all let me create that const auth middleware and this will be taking our request response as well as a next ke keyword next parameter and then we are exporting this function default so export default from here auth middleware so now this function will be exported from here and now we are going to extract that token here from our request object so let me show what i mean i mean so let me say let me for example let's put a console log statement and we'll put console log statement on the request and then we'll do our next so and we'll return our next return next okay so and now we're gonna use that custom middleware inside our index.js we append that middleware inside our app so we'll say app.use auth middleware and we can we can simply say that by passing our auth middleware over here so i will simply say auth middleware as as i do this you can see it has been automatically imported over here from our middlewares.auth and now if i save it so this middleware is going to be applied on every request whatever we whatever is going through this app instance or the express app instance so i'm going to pull up this part as well as I'm gonna show the console too so let me quickly this is making request again and again so every second GraphQL makes uh, every five second GraphQL playground make request in order to update its state so I'm, I'm currently seeing this again and again so see each time it is making automatically requesting the server and now we can see that users there that thing is there so in our request you can see we have a lot of things inside and this is a very heavy payload and see my scroll is also moving one one because GraphQL is constantly making this request on the server in the development environment but on the production we won't be doing that because we'll be putting we'll be switching off this playground with the in prod mode so this will give me false then the playground will, won't work there but for now it's fine so as I do this for every request whatever I am getting it is logging over there so every request is logging again again so whatever I'm getting here it is being triggered again and again 
and now we'll we'll start looking how we can use this custom middleware that we have created over here in order to fetch our authenticated user so within this request let me instead of request console I'm gonna say request.headers I'm gonna look for the headers inside that so request dot basically what will have what will do will get our auth headers so let me simply say const auth headers equal to request dot get and we'll pass our authorization key so I'm looking for authorization and then I'm gonna put console log statement and let's see what do we have inside that so auth headers auth header and let me save that and it's not stopping any kind of request because if we get rid of this next then it won't go out of here it will it will stuck here so that's why we are using next parameter so then it is allowing it to go to uh, go and access the other features of the app but if we don't return next from here it will st it will automatically get stuck here so make sure you are just sending the, some kind of that and let me quickly break the server now you can see that auth header is undefined and now if I go to my playground so for now auth header is not defined if I go to the playground and in HTTP headers let me increase it in headers I'm gonna create authorization and in that I'm gonna pass our token so this token was still valid token so I'm gonna quickly copy everything from here till there and we'll pass it and now if I say if I just pass it over here now you can see that we are getting our auth header here so every time it's making a request that header is getting me to that token so now we got we need to validate this token in order to get our auth header but we are not still stopping any kind of request so now look if that hot header is undefined if not auth header that means this is not a kind of authenticated request so we'll put is auth equal to false and we won't stop it that means uh, this this is gonna access something else where we we might not require the token but currently we are requiring our token so uh, we don't have to stop that but if auth has not defined that means it is going to ask for somewhere something else and let me quickly see inside the console and let me quickly increase the font size so that you can see more inside so still we have that token here that's why this part this part is getting uh, this part is skipped and we are just going through this but if I go ahead to my playground and instead of this whole I'm gonna get rid of this whole line and now if I just go here now it is getting undefined that means our auto or any kind of header is not available so now I'm gonna paste it back and we will start getting our again our this auth headers so now if that header is there any kind of auth token is there then we will look for our token so we'll extract that token using uh, so let token equal to auth header dot split and this is a basic javascript function so this will split our code and into an array so let me show you what is happening console that log and let me show you token so if I save it earlier we were having this auth header with the bearer token and I think I didn't write that bearer token so we are not just getting hit here so bearer and as I do this now this will split into the array of two elements so we are interested in the first part because this has all our payload whatever we have assigned in that token 
so we are interested in the first part first index actually and now if I save it we'll just keep on getting our auth token over here nothing else we'll get our auth token auth header and I'm gonna get rid of this line console log so we are just getting our token from the our pay, GraphQL payload our playground so this is our token and now we'll check if there is some kind of token so <clears throat> if not token if there is no token or our token equal to equal to an empty string we'll again set our is auth as false and we'll move to the next so now we are have splitted our token and we set our that that the that is not an authenticated request so it's not there's no worries and we are good to go with our other things but if there is a token then we are gonna decode that token so decode that token using verify so if, even if that token is invalid or the time has been expired this decode token so I'm gonna create a variable called decoded token and this is an empty currently and now we'll look for that so we'll firstly gonna try wrap it in a try catch and in case of any error so if it if this token is not decoded properly it will automatically throw that error and I'm gonna use our JavaScript function our our the package so I'm gonna import from our this JSON web token this verify method and we'll pass that and with that it also needs our secret so whatever the secret which we have used in order to hash our token that we have to verify with that so we'll go one up and inside the config and we'll bring in our secret so we'll bring in our secret so decoded token equal to and I don't know what's wrong with it okay so I forgot to write from and now this is fine and we'll verify and we'll pass our token here and also the secret so that whatever the secret we have used in order to hash that token so we'll use that here and this will give me the decoded token but if in case any kind of validation error goes for, uh, like for example if the token is expired it will automatically throw that error and as it throws error will again set that request header uh, as authentication as false and we'll move to the next line but if there is no issue with that we have that token and everything is valid so let's check for here if not decoded token if nothing is inside that let's say we get empty that means again we'll put that same thing here and we'll break out of it and this is how we are gonna do we are gonna set again request dot is auth property will be set to false so this is our custom property that we are setting it to our request object which we are getting and once if every if we have the decoded token and everything is valid enough then that means our decoded token should be having the payload which we hashed or which we have in has inside so what I'm gonna do is simply gonna check for the user so find the user from the database and from the database as we find that user so we need to bring it our user model from our models so I'm going to import from to up from the models I'm going to bring my user model so we'll simply say user and now I'll find that user from the server or uh, from the database and we can simply let auth user equal to and it is gonna it is already asynchronous task so we can use await keyword here user dot find by ID method and in that we are gonna pass that ID of the decoded token so this will be having our payload dot ID and as we do that 
we'll get our authenticated user so let me quickly put a console log statement and also we'll set one more thing so we'll simply say request dot actually we can say instead of this let okay so if that user is auth user is there if any uh, if auth user is not there then we'll again set our properties these properties false but if there is an auth user valid then we'll put our this that means uh, request dot user equal to auth user and request dot is authentication equal to true so that means with that and we'll again return back from here other and we are not blocking in at any point of the request so now we are good to go with our custom middleware and it's working fine and also let me put console log statement over here so let me say it's for the debugging purpose authenticated user I think I'm making a lot of typos authenticated user I will show our user auth user and now let's see what happens so in our playground I have already appended this valid token and now you can see that we are keep on getting our authenticated user from our server so we have all the properties inside it and that has been already appended to our requests so instead of this consoling this log out again and again set the request user equal to to what to the fetched user so whatever we have inside that we are just sending that request out so once with that we are done with our auth custom authentication middleware now we just have to provide this request object into our context and the way we can do that we can go to our main index.js file in our uh, this root in our source directory that we have index.js file so our middleware is working fine and in here we have to instead of this we have to return some kind of so this will have a request and we'll inject and this will return our request so firstly I'm going to extract the user from here so let is auth property and that the user that we have found so we'll extract that from our request because in our middleware we are appending those things here so these properties will be there always and then we are just going to extract it and then we are going to return that is auth then the then the we are also going to pass our request that the original request that we have as auth oops and the user and also the app models so whatever we were having app models and just a second yeah app app models so we are we have now the access to access these properties so this is will be available inside our context all the time and now it's time to go ahead and start creating our uh, custom directive inside our GraphQL resolver so the way we can do that by simply injecting into our this uh, this thing in our GraphQL I'm gonna create a new folder called uh, directives and within the directive I'm gonna I have created a new directory called directives and within that I have created two files called odd directive .js, and they are completely empty inside that and also I'm gonna install a new package called graphql so npm install graph ql so this is a this is a standard library which we have installed so this might take a moment to install all the things and now we are just gonna bring a couple of things from this package which we have used so in our auth directive .js, I'm gonna import that well simply is from our GraphQL that we have just installed and we are gonna bring in default field resolver 
I'll explain what's gonna happen first let me write the code because the amount of boiler code is quite much in order to create your custom directives for the GraphQL from Apollo Server Express I'm also gonna bring Apollo error as well as we are also gonna bring in our schema directive field directive visitor so these two other two things which I'm bringing from there then I'm gonna export a class from this so this class will be is auth directive and this will extend this thing called schema field directive visitor and now we have access of access to all the properties that we have because this is just a, a this is extending to this base class and now I'm gonna call visit field definition and in that whatever the fields we are gonna get we'll use that over here so visit field definition inside that I'm gonna create um, I'm gonna extract our resolve method so which will be our default field resolver and which will be equal to uh, we'll be pulling out everything from our fields whatever we have passed we are we have we are getting over here and then also field dot resolve resolve and this is gonna be an asynchronous function so basically I'm just looking for this function and th in this I'm gonna spread all the arguments that whatever we are getting so these are nothing these are no other arguments whatever we are passing into our context over here in the main source so this is our context and whatever we have we are getting here we are just passing it back over there so we'll look for these two and extract it from our arguments so first of all let me quickly show what happens here so let me say test equal to and ARGS okay and then we just return something we'll simply return result and not actually result we just put a console log statement and let's see what we are gonna get so test testing gonna test and this is and now we have to resolve this thing so far we haven't used this resolve but now later we will resolve this so it will work just fine for now and now we just have to go to our uh, we have to register exported default so we can go to our this index.js inside this directory and I'm gonna import first from or this file that our directive that we are have just created as our directive and then we are going to export as a constant so schema directive directives equal to as auth as is auth our directive and now we are just gonna apply this directive or inside our main index.js file so we will bring it from there import from our and GraphQL folder go to our directives then we'll get it from there as actually we'll call it as a schema just a second I this is amount of boiler code I also get confused sometimes it's nothing like that I know everything but sometimes it's like I just get confused so we are gonna import yeah so we are basically import that schema directives that we have already defined over there here inside and now we're gonna add that inside our main uh, the server Apollo uh, after this 
resolvers I'm just gonna save it and let me quickly show what is happening behind the scene so I have put a console log statement and as you know that GraphQL is constantly making that request so let me apply this middleware middleware somewhere so that we can see what's going behind the scene so let me quickly go ahead and create or inside our index post okay so we'll fetch all the posts from the database so in our type definition we can use this auth is auth directive as a add with the add rate symbol so inside our type definitions for now for example I'm just gonna use it as, as auth here but this thing is still not gonna work because this if I go to the console you can see we get an error as auth is not defined so firstly we have to define that uh, in our root resolver so our base definition inside that base definition will define that so inside that base definition will define by simply saying uh, we will apply that directive so the keyword for that directive directive add rate is auth and field field definition I think nation and as I save it we no longer get that error and our server will start normally but <clears throat> okay so I made a spelling again mistake I'm making a lot of mistake field as a field definition and now our server should start working fine so now we just have registered that inside our root resolver and now if I go to my this Google Chrome so in our playground if I try to access one of the query so let me quickly copy it from my code inside the docs post and we applied it to our get all post so let me copy that go to our playground put that at last and now if I say cannot return a label field on the query post I think cannot return okay but you can see this is what we are getting inside our testing so this is a testing undefined we have something undefined then we have arguments then we have the request inside the context that we pass and within that request we can simply see that this is auth is true that means we have a proper token which is a valid token which we have appended over here that's why that's why we are able to log that and even that we have the user also so the, the owner of that token is also there so he's also a valid user so we'll look for these things so we are going to extract those fields inside our this class that are directive and we were just stuck just because we haven't returned anything from here so this is this is not going to keep on this will keep on staying here this won't let to proceed further with our request so now inside here I'm gonna resolve that thing so what I'm gonna do instead of this testing we're gonna destructure that so firstly on the first field we are getting undefined so we don't need that thing also and then arguments also we don't we are not interested but from the context we are interested in user as well as its auth so basically we are fetching our is authentication and later if you want to define any other one you can define it that also here but for now we are just interested in, is is in auth and that if is auth is true then we'll resolve our results so const result equal to await and since it is a asynchronous function so we can await here we can use await and we'll use this resolve now so we can apply this resolve we can resolve this part because we have we have already done with our user and that means we have a valid one and we we'll bind this so whatever arguments we are getting here we bind our arguments here with this whole class with this whole directive and we'll return this result so result but if else we are gonna throw a new Apollo error so dhrow new Apollo 
error and we'll simply say you must be authenticated user to get you can write a custom method to get this information information and as I save it we'll throw this error out you must be an authenticated user let me put in our next line so it looks quite nice and we destructured it then we apply that and we return that result back here and that's how this directive is gonna work so now if I go to my our this part let me quickly reload that and that server is started running so now if I go to my playground if I want to access this get all post method so now if I click get all post and we are getting all the posts but if I get rid of this token that we have that we have that means we no longer will be able to access this one and if I try to get it we are getting our custom message over here that you must be an authenticated user in order to access this this whole query set so again I'm gonna post paste it there I'm gonna get all the posts and now I'm getting it so with that all set we are done with our directive and inside our po inside our type definitions we can apply that directive in order to protect any kind of resolver or any kind of query so we can let's say for example if we don't want uh, apply, uh, we don't want a user to access that email upload any image if that user is not authenticated we can simply write add rate auth and for that post also for example these are the authenticated requests so we won't allow any user to edit any post or delete any post or even edit any post we just can apply is auth directive over here and get all post is fine get a single post is also fine so these are the public access and these are the private access so if you're not authenticated then you won't be able to create a post so that's basically it about creating a custom directive and in the next video we'll start creating our Firstly, we have done our access control, but now in the next video, we'll look into how we can uh, we can populate the uh, we can add author fields to our post based on the authenticated user. So, thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know this one was quite hardest one, and this also took me quite a bit to figure out how the things are happening behind the scenes. But uh, always learning is very interesting for me, and I love doing that. I love digging into the code. So, hope the same for you. Thank you guys. So let's see in the next video.